Hmm. <laughs> oh, I got myself too. How about that? I greet thee, mortals. Welcome to my workshop. Today, I'm doing a tutorial on this. The Micro Potion Lab. So named because it's a whole lot smaller than any other potion lab I've seen with this level of functionality. The operation is simple. Press the button corresponding to the ingredients you want, in the correct order, of course. And press this button to dispense awkward potions into the brewing stand. Brewing starts automatically. Each ingredient is loaded into the brewing stand in order, automatically. Pretty great, huh? Personally, I like having these buttons up here so I can brew a potion without having to dig through a chest rummaging around for ingredients. All right, so let's build it. Here are all the materials you'll need for this build. These are just building blocks. You can choose any blocks you like. These are any useless block or item that will not fit in a brewing stand. The ladders are optional but helpful. Of course, you'll need your basic tools and you might want to snack while you're building. Here are the rest of the materials. Pause the video at this point and collect everything you need. All right, this is the minimum space that you can fit the micro potion lab into. These two blocks here can be filled in with non-solid blocks, but if you fill them in with solid blocks, you won't be able to refill the water bottle chest. Also, it makes it a whole lot easier to refill the machine. If you leave an extra block of space here, and a block of headroom along here, like so. This is optional, but you can put it in an infinite water source right here. Put the stairs over that, a block here with a button on the front, a brewing stand, a hopper leading into the brewing stand, another brewing stand, a hopper leading into the back of it, a hopper leading into the top of the first brewing stand, a chest to store water bottles in, and let's start the redstone. Place a block here, repeater here, repeater there, block here, torch here, it should look like this, and a block here, torch up here, and finally, a storage chest. You can click straight through the brewing stand in the front to access this handy storage area. There you go, that's the first step. Here's the second step. Start by placing five building blocks here and five repeaters leading into them. Five more building blocks across the front. Up back here. Five droppers across here facing downward, or upward I should say. If you have ladders, put them here. Go ahead and fill in the rest of this wall. Add the last eight droppers across here. Fill this block in, which is right above the main brewing stand. I'm going to place more hoppers leading into that one. Around the corner and back here. If you don't have this extra space, you're going to have to find some other way to escape. Come around to the front, push your buttons. And that's your second step, complete. The third and final step is getting your machine operational. First you go over here to the hopper leading into the main brewing stand. Put in your awkward potion. And four filler items. It doesn't matter the order you place these in, just make sure they're all in there. You can go to the brewing stand above that hopper. Throw some nether wart in there. You don't have to have a full stack, just throw some in there. I went ahead off camera and loaded up all my 
droppers back here. I didn't figure you'd want to watch me organizing my stuff. It's kind of boring, actually. Just go in here and place your ingredients however you want them to be organized. It's completely up to you. Here are your bottom and your middle droppers. Here are your top droppers up here. This is why I included this headspace. Go on back up to the front and place your signs here and label them. All your ingredients. That's how I've got mine organized. You can copycat if you want. There's even an extra slot for you to add any uh, ingredients that might be added in future versions of Minecraft. Now, if for some reason you don't have this access space back here, you can break out these blocks here in the front and these so you can get to all your different uh, droppers and fill them up. It's kind of a pain, but it's doable. Thus, I highly recommend that you leave yourself an access space, whether it's from the side, the back, the top, whatever. Just make sure you can get in here and get up there. It'll make your life a whole lot easier. Now, before I forget, you also need to fill up this top chest here with water bottles. If you installed the optional water source down here, you can just do this right here. Get your stack of bottles, start filling them up. When your inventory gets full, they'll start falling out on the ground like that. Pick one up, shift, and double left click. That'll throw them all in there automatically. You'll see some of them start to drain down here. I'm going to go ahead and fill up the rest of them. All right. And that will accept almost a full 63 bottles. We've got one left over. All right, and your brewing stand down here should automatically brew you some awkward potions. And now you'll, ready, you'll be ready to go, and you can test out your stand or whatever you want to do. Now for the optional features. What I've done is I've added an item frame and a piece of a colored block behind each button. You can click straight through each button, and they work fine. Uh, for the main ingredients, I've used stained glass, for the additive ingredients, including Dragon's Breath, which hasn't been added yet, I've used stained clay. I base these colors on the colors of the potions on the wiki. They don't have the shimmery effect that the potions do in game, so it's easier to see their true colors. And these were the colors that they seem to be closest to. These are the stained glass, these are the stained clay, and you can pause the video on either page. One more thing before I go. If you rename the pieces of stained glass you put in your item frames, the names will appear above the item frames on your mouse over them. See? What I've done is rename the buttons with the effect, a slash, and then the effect that you get when you combine a uh, fermented spider eye with the original effect. I find this more convenient. You might want to try it if you have the levels to spend. Alright, hope you've enjoyed my invention. This is Valiant70 signing off.